Hi everybody, welcome back to Angie's Answers. Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite things to do on the long arm. It is a really easy and fast gift. It is fleece blankets. I have tons of options that I wanna show you and I'm going to load one on the long arm and quilt one with you today to give you some of the tips and tricks that we've learned making these fleece blankets. So these are two layers of fleece, um, no batting and no binding. So it's a super easy and really good gift that a lot of people love. All of my friends have fleece blankets. Most of my family members have fleece blankets and they keep asking for more. And there's so many options out there that you can really do anything. So what we recommend is getting two layers of fleece. Both of them are going to be two and a half yards each. So two and a half yards for the top, two and a half yards for the back. That gives you enough wiggle room because the fleece is going to stretch and it's going to move so having those two and a half yards gives us a little wiggle room both directions so we can make a nice blanket for the couch so i've got some examples to show you um, i'm a big sports fan so i am a cubs fan in the summertime for baseball but then i am don't hate me a packer fan in the winter so i'm from wisconsin but i'm right by the illinois border so i do split my loyalties half cubs half packers so this is my blanket for the couch so that way i can use it any time of year um this is again the two and a half yards and what we're going to do is we are going to sew these two layers together remember there's no batting so because i sew it i don't have to sit and tie each one of these little fringes um, I can trim that off, square everything up, and then I'm just going to fringe these little one inch pieces. But because it's stitched together, I don't have to sit and tie every one of them. So I also don't have that bulk of all those extra ties. So this is my blanket that I use all the time. Um, I'm also a big Wisconsin Badger fan. So this is a two sided Badger blanket, two different fabrics. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell or not, but these are pretty long. So this is all the way to the floor and I can still wrap up with it. Um, this blanket was one of the kids wanted to make these. So we've got the Incredibles on this side and then a different version of the Incredibles fabric on the other side. They didn't like the fringe. So this one I did not fringe. I did trim it down, but these are still sewn together. They're not gonna come apart. Um, so this one was trimmed, but we didn't fringe this one. And the fun thing with this is we let the kids pick any pattern that they wanted. And we actually changed the pattern for each row. So every row was different. And why not? Have fun with it. Let them pick whatever they want. You can do whatever you want to. Um, this one, my mom, she told me not to tell you, but my mom made this one for me. So this is a nice pretty leaf flower print on the one side. She also did not want to fringe it, but she did one more step with this. She couched it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that in the video. So she also used the couching feet with the handy quilters and a really thick yarn, and then she couched a design on here for us. So a whole nother option that you can do. But today, the one that we're working on is this one here. I've got some princess fabric. So these are little princess castles and some unicorns. This is how I recommend when you first start to do it. Have one layer that's gonna be a printed side and have a second layer that's gonna be a solid side. When we are doing the long arm quilting, it is so much easier to see if we can have the solid fabric be our top as we're quilting it. So this of course is going to be the top as it's being used, but when we're quilting it, we're gonna load it upside down and load this for our back and this for our top. Because this solid fabric, you're gonna see how easy it is to see all of that quilting design, which makes our life a lot easier when we're lining up from row to row. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna show you how to square everything up and then we're gonna get it loaded on the long arm and we're gonna start quilting. Squaring up fabric is super important before we put it on the long arm. So remember, this is going to be my back. So this is what I need to square up first. I am going to hold those salvage edges together. So I've got one salvage edge here and my second salvage edge here, and I'm gonna match 
those two up and I'm just gonna make sure that there's not any twisting. So I want this to hang nice and straight like that. If there was twisting, that's what it would look like. And you wanna make sure to eliminate that. So I just shift those layers. All I'm doing is taking my fingers and shifting the fabric that way because that's the way that it's twisted and trying to eliminate that twist until it's hanging nice and flat like that. Then I'm going to combine all that fabric into one hand and come out to this corner and hold this corner up and make sure that's hanging nice and flat too. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of difference between these two. This is my short side here and then this is a little longer. So I'm gonna hold on to that short side and then I'm gonna pull out to this edge here and this is a lot closer. There's not a whole lot of difference between this side. But I wanna hold those two shortest sides together and match those up and then I can pull all of this nice and tight and lay that nice and flat on my table here. Smooth all of that out. Make sure that feels nice and smooth. I do have a bigger 60 millimeter rotary cutter that I like to use for this. And then I've got a really long ruler too so I can reach the whole thing. So I do wanna square this up. I'm gonna keep it, I know I probably do this wrong, but I use the grid lines on my table here. And that's what I use to square up. I know you're supposed to technically use a ruler. This has always worked for me. So now I wanna find the shortest side and I wanna make sure that when I cut this, I'm gonna have two pieces of fleece left over without having missed one of those layers. So I have to come in about an inch at the top. I know you can't quite see that, I'm sorry. I'm coming in about an inch at the top up here and it's almost two inches at the bottom. So that's why it's so important to square up this fabric. If you were using a fleece like my badger fleece here that has squares in it, try to use this for your top because that way you can watch where it's quilting. You can kind of manipulate those lines and you'll be able to keep this a lot more even. Um, I purposely don't usually line up on one of the lines, like I purposely cut off something on the edges instead of lining up on one of the perfect grid lines. So just another tip, this one being the castles and everything, there's not really any straight lines or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about that. And this is going to be my back. So I am going to cut this off. I think I have to go through another time because sometimes with fleece, it's easy to miss with that thick fabric. So now when I pull these off, I'm gonna have two pieces and I didn't miss anything. Then I wanna take my safety pins and I wanna mark my centers. So fleece fabric is really stretchy one way more than the other. So this way is a not as stretchy, this way is super stretchy. So can you see that stretch there? I want to make sure that I am putting the stretchiest side left to right on my frame. So that means that I don't pin to the salvages. Even though this is the longer dimension and you'd be able to quilt longer rows to get it done faster. Um, if you load it with your pins to the salvage side, it's really going to overstretch every time you roll it and it's going to make a mess. So I highly recommend pinning to the cut side. So I am going to mark my two centers here for this cut side. Just mark those two centers. Then as you know, we love the zipper system. So I am going to pin this to my zippers. So this fabric is directional. These castles go one way. So I'm going to keep this edge for the top of my backing fabric. And I'm going to keep this edge for the bottom of my backing fabric. And then don't forget the zipper system tells you that too. It tells me to pin to the backing fabric bottom left side, keeping that material wrong side up. And then it tells me to pin to the backing fabric top left side, also keeping that material wrong side up. So I'm gonna unzip this zipper. I'm gonna keep the bottom towards me, keep that towards my left. And then I'm going to find my center mark on the zipper. I line that up with the center of the fleece. 
and then I'm going to pin that down. I try to use as much of the pin as possible without like bubbling the fabric. Then I'm going to take my, where'd you go? Backing fabric, top left side zipper, keep that to my left, find my center mark, and I tuck it under the fabric. So it's always the zipper is the bottom layer, the fabric goes on top next, and then the pins go on top of that. So that way I can only see the zipper teeth. So this needs to get pinned. I do have a full video on how to pin on here as well on our YouTube on Angie's Answers. So you can go back and watch that if you want to. I'm gonna set this aside for just a second because I wanna make sure that you are good with squaring up the top. Same thing with the quilt top. I hold those two salvage edges near me and I make sure that that's not twisted at all. And then I wanna find this smaller edge. There is a little note on here. Oh, this is already measured. So this tells me that it was 84 inches long. So that wasn't quite two and a half yards. Sometimes we buy what's left on the bolt. But what I want you to know, because this is going to be our quilt top, this is really important that I know the measurement of this quilt top. Um, can you see, I know it's probably hard, there's a little extra here, so same thing, I need to square up my quilt top. Get rid of all that difference there. So I'm gonna come into here. We'll go through one more time. Make sure I got it all. I didn't quite get it. Oh, come on. There we go. Then same thing, if I pull these apart, I will only have two pieces. We do actually keep these straps. Um, they are really good if you do a really tight braid. Um, you can braid them together for like a dog toy. They're great for that. Um, all, all kinds of fun stuff. So we do actually keep those scrap pieces. So my quilt top is squared. I do want to measure this. Um, hold on, I'm going to have to do math because I don't have a zero. So I'm at 50 to 90, so I have 40 inches. So now I've got 80 inches. That worked out really easy math because I'm not so great at math. So I have a total top of 80 inches this way. And then the fabric when you buy it off the bolt is 58 inches wide usually. So I need to know those measurements before I load it on the long arm. I need to know how far I can quilt. So I am going to pin that and then I will come back when we are loading on the long arm. Just a few quick tips before we load on the long arm. When I pinned this, I did use the Handy Quilter Pearl Head, the long arm quilting pins. I love these pins. They're super sharp and they can go through that thickness of the fleece. So this zipper again is my backing fabric bottom because this is the bottom of our castle. There we go. Um, I always, when I use the straight pins, I poke myself. So lots of my shirts get holes in them and I poke my belly. So I've learned that when I'm using the straight pins, if I put just one safety pin, can you see that, in this corner on this edge, I'm less likely to poke myself. So in the bottom of the backing fabric, both of these corners, that left and right corner, I put just one safety pin there and that will help prevent me from stabbing myself with the straight pin. So I'm thinking that a couple of you are probably like, wait a minute, she only pinned the backing fabric. She didn't pin anything to that purple quilt top fabric. And that was on purpose because what we've learned, you're gonna see as I'm rolling this backing fabric on, it's gonna get really thick around our backing fabric roller bar. And if I tried to also roll the quilt top on, there's just not enough space here for those really thick fabrics to be rolled up on here. So that's why we only pin the backing fabric and we don't pin anything to the quilt top. So technically this is the full float method. So you get to see that too. So I'm going to start loading this on. I'm going to hold my bottom edge of the backing fabric and I'm going to toss that opposite side, the top edge up and over. Um, I did also verify that I have plenty of backing fabric. So this castle fleece is a lot bigger than our 80 inches for our purple fleece. I don't remember the exact number, but just verify that you have enough fabric. You want to know what that smallest dimension is. So when I go to zip, I make sure that this isn't twisted coming from the end of my fabric here. 
What you want to think about is this is I'm loading in the standard mode or the high mode. It's also known as this roller bar here would be for a quilt top if I was putting a quilt top on. So this roller bar that's touching my belly is for my backing fabric. Um, you can't see it in the video, but if you did get our quick zip system, the zippers also tell you which roller bar to attach them to. So this stamp on this roller bar tells me that it's for my backing fabric roller bar too. So I want to have my backing fabric below where that quilt top roller bar is. So I just make sure this isn't twisted and then I take that zipper and I put it underneath of this one so it's coming to here. Then I can attach these two ends together and start zipping my way across. Um, I did mention that the fleece is pretty stretchy. So as you're pinning, don't push. You're just gonna kind of ease those pins in and you can kind of push the fabric back a little bit too, um, but try really hard not to overstretch. Um, once I zip, I do wanna go around the back side, and I'm going to pull this fabric up towards me. Just give it a little fluff and make sure that that's hanging nice and flat all the way down to the floor on the back. Um, let me back you guys up just a hair. One of the other products that we highly recommend is this extra hand wheel crank. So we've got one up here for our pickup roller bar. There we go. Pickup roller bar. But it is super helpful if you add another one to your backing fabric roller bar. I've seen people post a lot recently, why is my backing fabric sagged in one spot more than the other? Or why is my quilt sagged? And that could be because as you're rolling, you're holding right here and you're rolling and you can shift the fabrics when you do that. So by adding the extra hand wheel crank, that does save a lot of headaches in the long run. I wanna make sure that all of my latches are locked in place, and then I'm going to start rolling this around. I do stop when I get to my zipper, because this is my chance to make sure that this zipper is nice and straight. If it wasn't, I would manipulate that canvas up or down to start with a nice straight edge. Then I'm going to roll that around until my pins are facing the floor. Just make sure that that salvage isn't rolled under. A lot of the times the salvage likes to roll up. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever cut the salvage off before I started quilting a fleece. I've always left the salvage on. You could try it if you wanted to, but I haven't done that before. So I'm going to roll this around. Again, here's where my zipper is. I want those pins facing the floor so that I don't stab myself. So I'm gonna keep rolling that till those pins are at the floor. And then I'm just gonna make sure this isn't rolling under and do a nice light smooth. I do wanna bring you guys in a little closer because I want you to see how much that edge has flared. So bear with me for just a second. We're going for a ride. This is our edge of our fleece here. So this is where my zipper was pinned, this outer layer here. And then this is my next row that's rolling around. And as you can see, they don't quite match up perfectly and that's okay because remember the fleece is going to really stretch. So I don't wanna put more pressure on it and stretch this out more. So I'm gonna leave this alone and I'm not going to worry about that. I'm gonna do another full turn around this is a really good view for you. So this is where my pin is for the edge of my fleece. This is where the layer is. It's going to find the natural spot that it wants to be without me overstretching. So I'm just here to smooth. I am not here to stretch. Go another turn. Get that over there just a little bit. So see how I smooth that out and that line that up? Then I can smooth this side out too. So I am going to keep repeating this process of rolling and smoothing, but not stretching until it's eventually going to fall. And I'll be back once it does. Fabric fell off that top roller bar there, our pickup roller bar. So I'm gonna go just a little bit more. And then I do need to unroll that canvas. So I'm, that latch is lifted up so I can unroll this one to bring this nice and close to me. I use this canvas. I love that the gallery frames come with that super leader, so this is a lot longer. So that way I can keep this top edge a lot closer to me. So I'm gonna take my zipper from here. Again, I make sure that it's not twisted, and then I can attach it to this canvas here and zip my way across. Then I need to keep rolling 
my fleece up till I have a nice flat surface. So do you see how close this top edge is to me? I don't want to reach and baste way back here, so use the canvas. Even on the studio frame or the loft frame with the Moxie or the Simply, there's a lot of canvas there, so you can bring that closer to you. I do recommend taking the time to make sure you have a flat surface. I've got just a little bit of a dip in here so I can adjust that, and usually that's because of the salvage. It's tight where the salvage is. So I can spin that fabric towards, oh, excuse me, away from me towards that pickup roller bar, and then I can just go one click tighter. Um, now I can put my purple fabric in. So I'm gonna open this up again. I'm keeping my selvages to my sides, and I'm just gonna lay that right on top of that backing fabric. This allows me to make sure that I'm even from left to right. And I pull it down just a little bit so I can see about an inch of that fabric right below my pins. So I'm kind of measuring how much I wanna push through. Then I can take just this purple fabric and roll that towards me and push that down below that bar. For those of you that have the gallery or the studio frame, you do have these right here. These are pole cradles. I'm gonna lift up the other end so it's not in your way. So you can lift up that roller bar and set it in that pole cradle and that gives me a lot of extra room under here so I can reach through better and smooth out that top fabric. So what I'm looking for, I wanna line up those two layers together so they are even with each other. Um, I'm gonna steal just a hair more this way. Perfect. Then I can set my pole cradle back down. And we are nice and tight. Um, next up, I need to pick a thread, wind a bobbin, and get this ready to stitch. So I will be back in just a minute. Just a couple tips before we start stitching. Measure twice, right? This is why we need to measure twice. So I've got my bobbin wound, my thread in, I'm ready to start stitching. But I thought, you know what, I should probably measure again. So I grabbed out my measuring tape. I've got it even with this top edge here. And then I'm going to come down to find this edge. And I actually have almost 85 inches. So I don't know what I did over there, <laughs> but that wasn't quite right. So what you wanna do when you are getting ready to sew down, Fleece is always gonna move, it is always gonna shrink. So I like to give myself a little bit more buffer, probably than necessary, but it just makes my life easier in the long, arm, long run. So I do have that same big ruler that I have over there. This is a three inch ruler. And remember, I want at least a three inch fringe. So I'm setting this ruler even with where the top edge of my quilt top and my backing are. So then that's gonna allow me to come down and then that way I can set it even over here and I can measure in about four inches from my side. So I do look to make sure the selvages where those are and then I come in from the selvage about four inches so that way once I'm all done quilting this, I'm gonna be left with at least a three inch fringe that I can do over there. You could come in five, you can come in whatever you want. Um, being that this is going to be for a little girl, I could come in a little bit more, come in those five inches, and that would still give her plenty to be able to wrap around. Then what I wanna think about is, okay, so I've got about 85 total. I'm losing about three to four at the top, three to four at the bottom. So I need to know what my total height of what I'm going to stitch is. So 84 minus my four on my top is 80, minus my four on the bottom is about 76. So I'm going to safely quilt 76 inches from top to bottom. Keep in mind if I would have bought, if this would have been a two and a half yard piece, I would have been starting at the 90 and then minusing from there. So always measure what you've got so that way you know how much you can quilt. So I'm in my four, five inches-ish from the side here. This is where I'm going to start stitching. So I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread, use my tie off button to lock those together and then turn my horizontal channel lock on on my computer. Then I can take this off and move it over here for just a second so then I can measure that edge. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm 
hesitate right here for a second and I'm going to measure over and find my four to five inches. I'm gonna set this behind here on this side. So this side of the fabric, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see, this salvage edge has the white piece on it. Where the salvage edge doesn't, it's colored all the way through. So that side has that white strip too. So I have to come in from that white strip and then measure my like three to four inches on that side too. Five if you want, whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm gonna set my zero where that white is and then I'm going to stitch until I get to about four or five inches away from this side. I do, I've learned a couple of things. I do want to stop right here and bring up my bobbin thread. So I'm gonna pull away, take one more stitch and bring up that bobbin thread. I've learned that if I don't do this step, if I don't take the time to bring up my bobbin thread, it'll actually stretch the fleece a little bit more. Sorry, my thread locked up underneath of there. So I just wanted to pull my bobbin case out and put my bobbin case back in. There we go. I'm gonna take my channel lock off. So I've stitched my horizontal line first. Oh boy. Now I'm ready to roll forward. Again, I keep this nice and close to me so I'm less likely to lean. It's a lot easier for me to see and I can stitch that horizontal line. Um, keep in mind when I do a regular quilt, so cotton fabric or anything like that, that's not fleece, um, and I'm rolling that quilt top on, I do like to start from the center and baste out. Being that this is fleece, I don't have to follow all of the same rules that I do when I am normally quilting. So I've got my center edge done. Now I want to move this up here so I'm utilizing that throat space. So I do have to lift up my two roller bars, my ratchets down here, and then I can just very slowly roll this up. But I do that with the needle up. I've learned if I roll with the needle down, it really stretches even more. And remember, fleece fabric is already stretchy, so I don't wanna stretch it more than I need to. So I'm looking at where the stitch line is and I'm gonna move it so I'm just a couple inches away from this bar here. So I'm gonna keep rolling that up about to there, just so I'm a couple inches below. Every time you roll the fleece, it's gonna try to suck in like this. So it's important that we take the time to smooth this back out, pull that so it's even again, and just make sure that nothing's twisting. And this is why if you did have a fabric like that Badger one that has squares on it, you would want those squares to be up here so you could watch right here as they're rolling, you can watch right here as they're rolling so you can pay attention and keep things a lot straighter. So now that I've got that rolled up, oops, sorry, I forgot to lock my ratchet. I lock those back down and I'm gonna just do one click. I don't ever like my fabric to be too tight, so if I grab and let go, then that's plenty tight. I'm gonna stitch down this side now. So I'm gonna come up where I stopped my stitching here, bring my bobbin thread up, hold tight to both of those, tack that in place. as far as I can and I do just double check that I still have at least three inches in from that white salvage line so that looks great I'm gonna push away make a nice long tail come back and do one more stitch and that's what lets me get my bobbin thread up so I can cut that off and cut these off now that these edges are secured together now I can put my side black clamps on so I put these on close to the edge they're not close to my stitch line. I don't wanna take the risk of hitting them. And then one of our favorite tools is just these cheap bent curtain rods. I'll, you'll be able to see it over there a little easier, but that goes underneath of my clamps and helps lift those up so then my machine doesn't get stuck on them. So I'm gonna come, um, I might turn those lights off. Sometimes it's easier for you guys to see with the lights of the machine turned off. So let me turn those off quick. I'm going to come up here where I stop stitching. I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread here. I'm a little nervous about that right there. So let me bring you guys in at this angle and see if you can see that. So when I rolled it forward, it did suck in a little bit. So now from my salvage, if I stitch right there, 
I do have four inches. That should be okay, but I think I might sneak in just a little bit more. So I'm gonna let that thread go and I'm gonna come over just a hair, just about a half inch more. Bring up my bobbin thread, lock those together. Um, I usually, I know this is probably a really bad habit. Oh, you can see Adam right there. Hey Adam, flat Adam. Um, I usually don't use my vertical channel locks when I've got my computer engaged because I'm really light on my handlebars here. I'm just pulling it with my fingertips, but you of course can turn your vertical channel lock on if that makes you feel better. So I'm gonna turn this on and pull down. As far as I can go, little wiggle to stop it, nice long tail, grab onto my that top thread, come back and do one more stitch, and that's what pops up that bobbin thread for me. So I can cut where I stopped, turn my channel lock off, get the machine out of my way, and cut where I started. Then I'm gonna put these clamps on. And slide that curtain rod in. So that again, just helps hold those edges up, those clamps up for me, so it rolls a little bit easier. You could use like a yardstick too, but I like these bent curtain rods because then that way it doesn't flop off when I am advancing it forward. Okay, let's come in nice and close so you guys can see my screen. Let me bring you up just a little bit. I'm ready to start doing my layout process. So first what I wanna do, again, I do this differently than how I do a normal quilt. So I am a cropper. I prefer when I'm doing edge to edge quilting to lay out more design than necessary and crop it to the measurements of that quilt. But normally on a, a regular quilt, I have extra batting, I have extra backing fabric, so I can allow those crop stitches to go off into that batting. They're gonna be totally illuminated before I put my binding on and you're not gonna see them. I find that cropping doesn't distort the patterns. Um, we do have a video available on our website, quiltingconnection.com. It's called Edge to Edge, um, load, or excuse me, Edge to Edge Quilting. And I do have another one for loading, Load It, Square It, Quilt It, that will walk you through the whole process on how to lay out an edge to edge design using the cropping method. What I find when I use this method, the fill method is your other option, Sometimes you have to distort the design to make it fit into the measurements of your quilt. And I'm not a big fan of that. I feel like the designers have created the design, the scale that they want it to. And if I have to stretch it to make it match the measurement of my quilt, sometimes it looks weird. So 99% of the time I am using the crop method. But this project, because I'm not putting binding on, because there isn't any extra batting or backing fabric, I need to use the fill method. So that's going to allow me to take the pattern and it's going to fill it within the measurements that I'm going to put in. And then I'll only have one starting point on the left and one stopping point on the right. And I won't have all of those extra stitch lines for when I crop or all of those extra tacks for when you crop. So I hope that difference makes sense. Um, if you did purchase our edge to edge video on our website, we do have a transcript that goes along with it that I would also email you. So then you have the paper step-by-step -step printed out instructions too. Those videos are $40. Um, so I'm going to lay out a fill method with the pro stitcher and have you see how that works. First thing I need to do with the fill method is I need to show it that area that I want it to quilt within. So I'm going to physically move my machine towards the top left corner, but I'm again going to give myself some buffer. So you can see that I am not lined up on the stitch line to the left and I'm also below the stitch line to the top. I'm about a half an inch in. Then I'm gonna come to my area tab and I'm gonna hit my two corner button. If you wanna see where your crosshairs are, you can always hit the home button. That'll refresh so it'll show you the location of your crosshairs on your screen. Now, let me turn you guys over this way. I'm gonna go to that bottom corner. So I bring my machine over and on this side, I'm gonna stay in, same thing, about a half an inch maybe maybe about an inch, I'm more about an inch in on this side. 
Because remember, every time we quilt across, that right hand edge is going to suck in more than the left hand edge. So I'm giving myself extra buffer. These tacks are going to be on the inside edges of the quilt. So I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally get it past my stitching line here and then cut off one of those tacks. So I'm trying to ensure that all of my starts and stops are going to stay inside of the project. So I'm gonna hit my two corner button again. That sets my width for my area. So if you look at the screen, the width of my area is 48.66. So that sets how wide I want it to quilt. Um, we measured our height and we said 76 inches is safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my 76 inches here. And then this is the total dimensions that I want to quilt for this fleece project. Now I need to open up my design. So that's file, design, and open. The pattern that I'm using is from Ann Bright. So it's one that we purchased. So I am actually on my D drive, which is my USB drive. Um, C drive would be everything saved to your machine, but I save all my patterns on my D drive. So the one that I'm going to use is this one here. It's called Princess Magic. It's super cute, has crowns and little wands in there. So first thing I look at is the height of the design. It's about 12 inches tall, right up there in the top center, that tells me. I am on my infinity machine, which means that I can safely quilt about 18 inches at a time. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna modify and resize this. I wanna do the height and I want it locked. And I'm gonna change this to 18 inches just so I can see what that scale looks like. This is our one to one ratio to show me how big that is. Let me use my pan. So that would be the actual size of the stars. Those are pretty big. They're almost the size of my hand. Um, where is one of the crowns? Here's one of the crowns. That's gigantic. So that's even bigger than the size of my hand. Being that this is for a little girl, I think that's a little bit too big. So you can play with the size of your pattern of your row. Um, let's take it down to like a 15 inch. And I think that's better. I personally like to have the quilting a little bit bigger on fleece blankets. I found that if I quilt really tight together, it doesn't keep it as soft and flexible. So I prefer a little bit bigger. So I've got the row, the size that I want it to be. Now I can come to my repeat tab and I can use this button here, this fill, and that's gonna populate how many designs it can fit within my measurements of my quilt. Clearly that doesn't work. <laughs> I do have to do a few of adjustments. Can you see right here is the spacing between the rows? So I'm gonna come to my vertical option and I'm gonna close up that gap a little bit and bring those closer together. You could use your zoom tool and zoom in so you can see those rows. That's pretty good. We could go a hair closer and then I could use my pan to kind of slide over. This is the closest point right here, so I'm gonna pull that back. So I'm hitting the plus button, increases the gap, puts more space. The minus button decreases the gap and brings them closer together. So I like that spacing from row to row, but I don't like the way that it fits in my quilt. So I'm gonna come back to the horizontal option and I'm gonna add a repeat this way. That's pretty close. We can do some adjustments. So I'm going to tell it to stretch the design, which means it's gonna just scooch it in just a little bit so it fits inside of my measurement horizontally. Then I'm gonna go back to my vertical and I'm gonna tell it to stretch that vertically. So now this design fits within the measurements of my quilt. It is super important right now that you do a baseline the machine's trying to remember all five of my vertical rows, and it's remembering that I have two repeats per row two. When you do a baseline, that's gonna freeze everything to the screen, and that's gonna change this so this says one horizontal, and it says one vertical. It's just less for the machine to have to buffer and remember. It is also a really good idea to save at this point. So I'm gonna go File, Save, Selected. I created this folder on my stick, I also have that same, sorry, come here, designs. I have that same folder, that A quilt layouts. I put the letter A in front of it so it stays at the top. If you wanna create a folder, there's a button right there, that plus button with the folder in it, that's how you can create them. So this is where I save all of my layouts for my customer's quilts. As you can see, I save it as their names. So I'm gonna delete this, and this one is going, oops, sorry, delete this one, clear that out, and this one is going to be for my niece, Ruby. Save that. Um, 
Now I want to do one more step before I'm ready to stitch and that would be creating my quilting space. So I no longer need this pink area. So I can go area and clear. And as you can see, the design stayed its exact same shape and proportion. Right up here is my total. So I'm quilting 48.66 by 76 inches tall. Quilting space, I do have a full video on this, but what that shows me is the location of my roller bars on my screen and then where I'm supposed to baste each row. So I want you to be able to see the lines here. So I'm going to move my needle to exactly where I basted this row. And then I'm gonna push that straight away from me until I hit that roller bar. So I'm pushing it all the way up. I'm under the area tab. You probably can't see my screen area tab, quilting space, and then two corner on the right hand side. So that shows me this little black box, shows me the left boundary and the top boundary. I'm gonna go on over to that edge there. And I'm going to put my machine again exactly where I've basted this side here and all the way down towards me and touch that two corner on the right hand side. Let me bring you on back. So this black box on the screen, this shows me the location of my top fabric roller bar, or excuse me, of my pickup roller bar. This shows me the location of my top fabric roller bar. So the roller bar that's closest to me and the roller bar that's the farthest away from me. And that helps me visually see if I can reach the row or not. So this crown that's facing down with the heart, that's about the bottom of the row. So this is the next row, that crown with the heart facing down. So I can definitely reach this full row, but we'll have to move it before we can reach the next one. So I am ready to let this start quilting. When I come to Pro Stitcher tab and quilt, everything that's over here on the right hand side is the functions that it's going to do. When you hit the run button, it's going to verify your settings, and then you wanna hold your thread before you tell it to proceed. It's gonna to move to the starting point and it's gonna take that first stitch. So I can grab my bobbin thread and I just pull on that to make sure I've got plenty of tail here so I can hold these and then I can tell it to resume. So those tacks are all inside of the quilt. I can come back and cut that off and I'm gonna let this run. But look at how amazing this fleece looks. You can see that stitching so good if you pick a solid layer for the one side and then that printed layer for the other side. So this is gonna make our life so much easier when we're trying to line up our rows. I'm going to go ahead, oops, sorry, up to stitch. And I'm gonna speed this up. I'm only at 41% right now. So I can go ahead and speed that up. Whenever I speed up a speed percent, I also wanna speed up my acceleration. I want those two to kind of match. Okay. So off and running, it's going to do these rows, and then I will come back once this one is done. First row finished. It got to the end here and it took a tack. So all I need to do is push away, make that long tail, come back and do one more stitch to bring that bobbin thread up. Then I'm ready to roll. So I do have to take my black clamps off on both sides and I just leave them right over this curtain rod so then they don't slide like all the way back. Sometimes it's hard for people to see where they need to roll. I can see this, sorry, I'm trying to grab a pin. I can see this pretty good, but if you grab just one of those pearl head pins, you can stick it right into where your stitch line is. So it's a little easier for you to see as you're rolling where that edge of your row is. So now I need to roll this forward. I don't have anything on this roller bar, on my top fabric roller bar, so I only have to release the backing fabric roller bar. And then I'm going to roll this up until that pin gets a couple inches away from that solid roller bar. And then I kind of make sure my backing fabric is nice and tight, smooth this out. Just kind of give it a little tug, make sure nothing is bunching up. Then I can take this pin back out. I need to re-secure my side edges. And this is what I wanted you to see, is whenever you roll it in, it is really going to suck in. So I'm gonna take you down to the end of the frame here. 
and hopefully you'll be able to see this pretty good. So it tells me I'm on long jump pause right now. I can go ahead and cancel that because I can't fit the next row. I'm going to zoom out so we can see our quilting space. So this black line is where I'm supposed to baste each row. So I'm going to move my machine over. Let me bring you guys in a little closer. There we go. So I just physically move my machine until this orange vertical line covers that black line. And that's where I'm supposed to be basting my row. I'm going to push up here and look where my needle is. This is where my stitching line is. This is where that black quilting space is. So every time you roll it forward, it's going to move in and it's going to try to shrink in. So that's why we're gonna use these clamps. I'm gonna put this clamp on and give that whole edge a little bit of a tug so I can line up this stitching line better with where my needle is. Then I'm going to also put this one on before I start stitching and same thing. I'm just gonna kind of give that edge a little bit of a tug to make sure that I'm leaving myself at least three inches here. So then I can go ahead, I'm still lined up on the black line on my screen. So I can bring up my bobbin thread here, hold tight to both of those, tack those in place. And then again, you could turn your vertical channel lock on if you wanted to, I'm not going to, but I'm going to just stitch down this edge again. All the way down, sorry. A little wiggle to stop that and then a nice long tail. Hold on to that tail and come back and do one more stitch. And that's what brings up my bobbin thread so I can cut this, push my machine out of the way and cut where I stopped here. So you need to use these clamps to help you keep this edge as square and as even as possible. So they do need to be a little tighter than normal to help you keep that over. Then let's move over to this side. I hope nobody has motion sickness. And I'm gonna come over here. I can't see on my screen where my left edge is, but I can use my follow button and that's gonna find my crosshairs for me. So same thing, I'm gonna move over until I'm covering that black line and the same thing happened here. This is my stitching line from my previous row. My needle is beyond that. I know I'm gonna be in your way. Um, let me switch sides with you. So I can put this clamp on. Same thing, give that a little tug to help pull that over. So now where that stitching line is matches up with my needle, which also matches up with that quilting space line. And then I give this edge just a little bit of a tug too. Then I can go ahead, bring my bobbin thread up tack those together and stitch down this side. Nice long tail. Come on back and do one more stitch. And that's what pulls your bobbin thread up for you. So then you can cut where you ended and cut where you started. Okay, so now we are ready to line up between our rows to quilt the next one. Lining up between the rows, it's your job to make sure that what is on the screen matches the physical location on the quilt. I do have another video specifically related to drag and drop is what I like to use. I'm gonna slide you over just a little bit. So I like to find the lowest part of the pattern. Oh, I need to move you a little more, sorry. You'll get there, don't worry. I will get there. I'm going to use this swirl right there. You can use, I have my zoom tool turned on so I can just draw a box around there so I can see it better. I wanna get lined up on a single stitching line that's towards the bottom of the row. So that's why I picked that one right there. I usually don't line up with a point. I find that it's not super accurate. You could also use this one. It's not super accurate because the fleece is moving so much and stretching and shrinking in and just moving all around. So now I found a stitching line on my screen now I need to find the physical location of that stitching line up there closer to that solid roller bar on the quilt. So I am going to turn my drag function on. Come on, there we go. And then I'm also going to turn my channel lock on because that prevents me from moving left to right. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see that better. 
as I am pushing my machine away, row one is going to move up and out of my quilting space right here. So because I physically moved row one within my roller bars, now I physically need to move where the design is on the screen up and out of the roller bars. So I'm gonna keep pushing that until my needle gets right on top of that same stitching line on the quilt. And look at how easy this is to see. Oh my God, I love it so much. Okay, so I'm going to look right here. That's the stitching line for the row and I'm going to put my needle directly on top of there. So now what is on the screen perfectly matches the physical location of the quilt. And then I can drop it in place and take my channel lock off. So that allows me to move the machine without that pattern moving again. If I use my quilting space again, I can see that I can reach the top edge of row two. Remember this crown with the heart facing down, that's the bottom of the next row. And this is where my starting point is for my row. So now my next step is I need to change because I can't quilt row one again, I need to quilt row two. So that's a new start and end, jump it down. That moves to my starting point for row two. Um, my run button is grayed out because I'm not on the quilt panel, so I just have to touch quilt and that gives me access to my run button. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and run this row. Then I'm going to come back once all five of these rows or four of the rows are done and we're ready to quilt the last row. So I can show you some tips for if you needed to make some minor adjustments on the last row of the fleece. Four rows done. I just have a little bit of fabric left, so it just finished. I do sometimes, because I left myself a little buffer over there, you can turn the machine on, do just a little bit of free motion if you want to stop a little closer to that edge. So I've been doing that each row, just doing a little more free motion, just a couple more stitches to get closer to the edge. So I just turn the machine on, slide over a little bit, and then that's where I stop. Make a nice long tail, bring up my bobbin thread. It let me quilt the four rows, so I do want to check and see how much thread I've got left. I don't have enough to finish it, but I do have another bobbin wound. So I'm going to swap out my bobbin thread. No sense in running out, right? Put that in. And again, that was only one bobbin, so I don't need to clean an oil yet. So now let's roll forward. You can stick a pin in if you need to see where your stitching line is. But I'm going to roll this up to get to that last section. And as you can see, I still have plenty of the backing, but I'm running short on my quilt top fabric. So first thing I want to do, this is going to sound a little opposite, but I want to line up my rows to see how much space I've got and if I can fit that last row or not, or if I didn't quite measure right. So I'm going to bring you guys in closer so you can see my screen. So we already did our drag and drop, but we can check that. So this is the low point of a row on the screen and that matches on my quilt where that low point is for that quilt. So now I need to show myself the location of where I can fit the next row, that last row. So I do need to take and I need to make another area and I need my area to be beyond the stitching line on the quilt. So this is the top of the row here. So I need to be a little bit above that right there. And I'm going to go to my area tab and say two corner. Then I'm going to find over on that side how much I can reach here. And I'm going to stay in just a little bit again from this edge of the quilt and hit my two corner button there. So I need to make this row fit in this area. Because I have all of these rows open, there's not really an easy way to do this. So I remember that we made this 15 inches tall total, but if you look at my area, I only have about 12 0.37 inches. There's probably a few different ways you can do this. This is how my brain works. So I'm actually going to get rid of this pattern. I'm going to go file, close, and selected, but that kept my area inside of my quilting space for me. And because I gave myself some buffer room, that's why my area is in there and a little closer on this edge here. So I'm going to go back and open up my design, that Princess Magic design, and I'm going to tell it to repeat and fill with inside of this area here. Um, our height's at 12 right now. So we can go ahead and stretch that 
vertically and then stretch it horizontally and then that will fit that last row inside of my box. Is it gonna be exactly the same as the previous row? No, but it'll be really close. So this again, didn't work out perfect. And thankfully with fleece, not a big deal if it doesn't work out perfect. This last row is gonna be just a little bit smaller. So I highly recommend giving yourself more space than you think you need. I didn't think I would lose two inches coming down, but I did. So that tells me that when I lay out my total height, I should have come in instead of doing 76 inches, I should have done about 74, 73 inches. Then you could always expand the last row if you needed to. So I'm gonna baseline to lock that row in place. I'm not gonna save it though. And then I'm going to tell it to go ahead and quilt this last row and it is going to quilt it inside of our last space that we've got. Let me back you up a little bit so you can see better. Grab my bobbin thread, tell it to resume, and it's going to quilt this last row for us. Okay, then once this row is done, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take you up to the cutting table and show you how I square this all up and how um, we fringe those edges. It's all done. I took it off the long arm. I took my zippers off. I'm ready to square this up. It's, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see in the video, but this is my last row and it really doesn't look that different from row number four. So I'm going to use my cutting table, use my three inch ruler. And again, I leave this purple side facing up because that's a lot easier for me to see where that stitch line is. That's where I'm going to line up my ruler. And I'm going to start trimming everything. Oh, sorry. I'm going to switch to my 45 inch blade because that I just changed. Isn't it nice when you change your rotary blade and you're like, holy cow, why did I wait so long? So I got a fresh new blade on here because fleece is a little hard to go through. So I just stay lined up on this edge here. I'm lining up my ruler right on my stitch line there. And that's what's giving me my three inches. You could save this piece, use it for a little pillow if you wanted to. Then I'll rotate around and I'm going to work on trimming this. And then once I get this all trimmed, I'll come back and I'll show you how I fringe. All trimmed to three inches wide. So here's my stitch line. Here's my extra. I know that I'm really spoiled and I have a really big cutting mat. So my cutting mat is 56 inches this way and like 90 something that way. So I'm spoiled. I get to lay the whole thing out, but you could of course do sections at a time. So I want to show you how I start fringing. I'm lined up with my grid down here on both edges. And then I want to come in three inches here. I'm just going to come in about halfway into the corners like that because I want to give myself about an inch free here. And then I trim off this piece this way and I trim off that piece that way. And sometimes I have to go a little bit in, but I'm trying to leave myself a little bit of a flange here. And then I just square off that end. So I have a little one inch piece coming into the corner. Then I can use my grid mark and I am just going to cut up every inch line until I get close to this edge. Let me come from this way. Maybe it'll be easier for you to see. So I'm just lining up my rotary cutter on each one of those one inch marks. And I'm not cutting, going to where my stitch line is. I'm stopping before that. So then these will stay held together like that. So I just work my way around all the way around the blanket. I like to do my corners first so I know that all of my corners look good. So I'm going to come in and cut about halfway up to where that seam line is on that three inch mark and about halfway up that way. Trim myself back, trim myself back and sometimes I have to go a little bit more and then square off that edge. So I've got about a one inch little fringe and then you're left with these little pieces that I do just throw away. That way I know my corner's good. And then sometimes I will work my way backwards from the corner like this. So that way, if it didn't match up perfect, I know everything from the corner is an inch. And if I'm off just a little bit, then that inside part, it won't show up in the middle of the fringe. If I did need to have a little bit of a smaller or a little bit of a bigger one. So I work my way around, 
cutting every inch or so. This doesn't have to be perfect, but I try to stay as close as possible. I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me to cut towards the left than it is for me to try to cut that way. And then because I've got my nice big table here, I can start working my way around this edge too. So I'm gonna work on all of these edges. I'm gonna get this all fringed. Um, let me come just a little bit back here. I'll do a couple more on this side so you guys can see that a little better. So I'm just lining up on that one inch line on my grid and cutting away like that. So all these little fringes here, these aren't going to pull apart because again, that is stitched right here. So I don't have to take the time. Oh, if I missed, see how that didn't cut all the way through. I can come back and just fix that. But I don't have to take the time to tie all of this because we have that stitching line. So I'm going to continue fringing this whole edge. The only edge I can't really reach is over there. So then I'll rotate the whole blanket. So then that edge is back over on my open side of the cutting table and fringe this whole thing. And then I will show you the project when it's all done. I wanted to make sure you got a good view of how I do the corners. Again, you can do them however you want to. So what I want is I want to be able to have about an inch wide um, fringe coming off from this corner. So I kind of eyeball where that would stop. If I'm centering from my piecing line here, if I'm centering from here. So I go up probably about three quarters from my edge to here. So that's as far as I cut this way. And then same thing, I'm gonna kind of measure, and I know I'm gonna be in your way, I'm sorry. Then I cut about three quarters up that way too. That way I can eyeball from the center out about where one inch is, and I didn't quite get all the way, so I can go a little bit farther and just kind of keep trimming that till that piece comes off. And then I want about an inch wide from here too, so I can go that way and go a little farther in this way till those two meet together and then i do want to do oh i got a little little close on that one i want to square this off so then i come to here and just trim that that way so then i'm left with a little one inch fringe coming from that side um then i can go here and do the rest of those fringes. I know I'm in the way, I'm sorry, I can't really cut. I guess I could cut backwards. One inch that way. I don't recommend cutting backwards, but I'm staying pretty close. <laughs> and then I can finish up my last little one inch fringes this way. And that's it. So just a little tail here in the corner, but again, you can finish up your corners however. I just wanna kinda keep it consistent to have that piece coming off from the edge there. So quilt is done. Let me tilt you guys up a little bit. And here we go, is that the top? That is the top, good. So here is her project here. This is a really nice size. Uh, my niece Ruby is only five. I think she's five now. So this will last her for a very long time. But she's got her princess castles on one side and then she's got that super cute pattern on the back. So again, this pattern is called Princess Magic from Anne Bright. Um, I hope this gives you some great ideas on how to do the fleece and play with it, have fun with it. Um, if you have some suggestions on little tips or tricks that helped with you, let me know. Um, there was one more thing I was gonna tell you. Oh, I don't remember, um, but don't stress. Again, this is fleece fabric. It's always on sale, which is great. You can get any type. Um, we usually just go to Joann's and buy what's on sale. So print on one side, solid on the other is going to make your life a lot easier and no binding. And if you don't want to fringe it, you don't have to fringe it, but I think it looks kind of cute with these little fringes here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have questions, you can reach out to us. Our email address is info at quiltingconnection.com. Phone number 262-723-6775. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to our YouTube, our Facebook, our Instagram. We've got all the channels. So I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope this gave you some inspiration for some gift ideas. Thanks so much.